So I find Roots of Unity really, really fascinating, and it brings together a couple of ideas that you already know. So let's get started. What does Roots of Unity mean? Because I think it's a really intimidating thing. Well, the word Unity, we're dealing with the word unit, which is the number one. So we're looking at roots of the number one. Uh, now, when we're dealing with roots of unity, we're dealing with complex roots of unity. All right, so now that we understand what we're doing, complex roots of one, let's see what it looks like. So we'll start with the root of one, because that's like really straightforward. We're saying a complex number raised to the power of one equals one. Well, that's just the same as saying that the complex number is equal to one. And I guess I could express that in some strange ways, right? I could say that the answer is the number one. I could be more explicit or and say that it's z equals one plus zero i. One in the reals and zero in the imaginary. But I could also write that it's um, cis zero or one cis zero. The one's not really necessary. That just says modulus 1, angle 0. And I could draw this on a um, Cartier, on an Argand diagram. So Argand diagram, this is my one answer to the question z to the 1 equals 1. Okay, what about the next step up? So we're doing another one here, z squared equals 1. Now remember, this is a complex number, even though it's purely real. So we're going to say that z is equal to the square root of 1. But maybe we should think about it in a different way. Maybe we should instead think about it as the square root of 1 cis 0, because 1 and 1 cis 0 are the same thing. We can then apply De Moivre's theorem here and say that that's the same as the square root of 1 cis... And how many answers are we going to get? We're going to get two answers because we're taking a square root. Now, one of those answers is just going to be 0 divided by 2, which is, of course, 0. So that's uh, 1 cis 0, which is, of course, 1 on an Argand diagram. Now, remember, when you take the nth root of a complex number, and 1 is our complex number, you're going to get n evenly spaced answers on our Argand diagram. So that means I'm going to get two answers, and they're going to be evenly spaced. And one of them is there, which means the other one must be there. Okay, I have two answers now, and so far we kind of could have figured this out without complex numbers, because our two answers are positive one and negative one, no imaginary components. Just for the sake of thoroughness, I'll show you the algebraic bit here. So one of our answers was cis 0 divided by 2. The other answer is 0 divided by 2 plus 2 pi on 2, which is 1 cis pi, which is, of course, negative 1, which is our answer right here. So our two answers are the number 1 and the number negative 1. Now, z cubed is where it gets interesting. Now, z cubed is equal to 1, so, of course, z is equal to the root of 1. But let's treat it as a complex number, so 1 cis 0, 0. And we can, of course, use the Moivre's theorem here as well. Oh, that was a cube root, wasn't it? So cube root 1, cis 0 divided by 3. Now, of course, the cube root of 1 is 1, and cis 0 divided by 3 is cis 0. And by now, we should know that 1 cis 0 is just the number 1. And on an Argand diagram, we have that. Now, z to the 1, z to the 2, z to the 3, you can see all of our solutions have 1 as an answer. And that makes sense. Z to the anything equals 1. 1 is going to be one of our answers. We always have an answer, a purely real answer, the number 1. Now, we already know that when we're taking the nth root of a complex number, we're going to have n evenly spaced answers, which means that my other two answers are going to be um, here and here. Um, I need to make sure that my angles are right. That's a 120 degree angle, and this is a 120 degree angle, and this is a 120 degree angle. Three evenly spaced answers, one of them purely real one. Now I've also given these answers in sort of purely algebraic terms here. So one of the answers was one or one cis zero plus two pi on three, which is just cis two pi on three, 120 degrees, or one cis zero plus two pi times two over three, which
which is cis 4.3, which is 1 cis negative 2.3, which is this answer right here. Okay, you should see what's happening here. We always get an answer of 1, and we get evenly spaced things around our circle. So here are our first six roots of unity. And you can see that it's really straightforward. One of the answers is 1, and then they're evenly spaced, which means that these are 180 degrees apart, these are 120 degrees apart, these are 90, these are 72, and these are all 60 degrees apart. Now, the last thing I need you to understand is that when it comes to roots of unity, you're actually solving a polynomial over C. A polynomial over C. And you should already know about something called the conjugate root theorem, which says that roots of some polynomial are always going to have, uh, complex roots are always going to have conjugate pairs. And you can see that's the case here, because you should recall that conjugate pairs are reflections over the x-axis. So this is a conjugate pair of, of complex solutions. These, this is a conjugate pair of complex solutions. Conjugate pair, conjugate pair, conjugate pair, conjugate pair. The conjugate root theorem holds when we're doing roots of unity because roots of unity are just a very special type of polynomial over C. All right, uh, that's all I want to talk about with roots of unity. It's just a particular case of De Moivre's theorem. It's actually not that intimidating.